Hello everyone, my name is uh, Emanuele, I'm Italian, I'm a social entrepreneur and uh, I'm, I love sustainability. I do trainings for social entrepreneurs in many countries and I'm married with, with my co-founder, which is something that I do not suggest unless you're crazy and I'm really crazy about her and about what we're doing. And today it's my birthday. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to be talking about what's the role of openness like in social innovation. Like I, I'm deeply convinced that, you know, that if we really want to get this market together, like we need to open up like all these, uh, whatever is happening so that we can foster participation, the replication of the best initiatives, and then like we can scale the impact together. And most of all, one thing that I'm really stubborn about is that we do not reinvent the wheel. Because uh, if we're trying really to solve problems together, then it would be really stupid if, every, if everybody's trying to do the same thing, like, but uh, separately or individually. And I'm going to start like, with a beautiful example. I'm going to give you like, plenty of examples. Uh, the first one is about uh, DKK, which is a company that nobody knows about. And it's the 1990s. And uh, there is a problem with the CFC, chlorofluorocarbons, that are causing the ozone depletion. They're coming out from fridge. And, uh, Greenpeace, they said, they brought together several scientists and they said, fantastic, you know, like, let's try to come up with a solution which is called the Green Freeze Technology. And they started working together with uh, DKK, this company, to produce the first uh, generation of fridges that was actually going to save the ozone layer. And the results is easy. 35 million domestic green freeze are still produced yearly and uh, 450 million tons were actually uh, avoided, but the company failed because it was copied because uh, their technology was open source. So it's really interesting because if you would imagine this company actually closing up the technology, taking a patent, probably DKK would still be here today as a strong competitor of uh, Miele, Lieber, Siemens, and so on. But uh, we would have never solved the problem as fast. So like uh, I ask you again, you know, like what's the role of openness in social innovation and in solving problems? And uh, I really believe there is like a love story between like uh, social innovation and what everybody's passionate about at this conference uh, and openness. And uh, so like I started analyzing all the different impact that uh, openness has on uh, social innovation initiatives. And uh, I would like to start with the one of technology. I'm gonna give you another example as the one of DKK, but a slightly more positive one with a company that managed to open up and didn't fail. <laughs> so the example is the example of Sula, the biggest social enterprise in India. They are helping uh, solving the problem of the untouchables, like, which is the lowest caste there. And uh, to help them, they have developed like this amazing toilet technology and they managed to actually transform uh, all the excreta into like uh, water that is used for agricultural use, into fertilizers, and into electricity. And they opened up completely the technology, asking people, please replicate. You know, like we cannot actually scale everywhere. Make sure that you can actually use this technology and do as many good things as you can in your countries. And uh, this is a fantastic example of a company which is making money, which is helping those people actually coming out from the cycle of poverty. And uh, finally, also like as a really like proactive approach towards the environment. And they are open source. Another beautiful example is like the one of problem solving, like how openness can actually influence problem solving. And uh, I love the example that I actually learned from the United States. It's called Fold It. Uh, I find it like amazing. It's like a, a game that they have developed to fold proteins. And uh, by folding proteins, actually, you can solve several medical diseases like AIDS. And uh, at the very beginning, like, they decided to make this kind of 3D modeling uh, software only for the university researcher, for the experts in the topic. And suddenly they said, let's open it to more university, and then they said, let's open it to everyone, so that even my grandmother could actually like, play with sol uh, so, uh, um, fold it. Sorry. And uh, it was uh, surprising because they started actually having young kids of 14 years old able to fold proteins better than several researchers. And they said, wow, you know, this is incredible. And they asked people, how come how did you manage actually to fold these proteins? We, started, we were trying for 30 years. And uh, the guy said, uh, I actually love Tetris, you know? So it's really interesting because just by opening up something that is like problem solving, they manage, manage actually to achieve better results than just uh, by closing like the problem solving approach to just a bunch of experts. Another fantastic example is product development. And that's again like, a, uh, that's inspired of a beautiful TED talk that I saw like on Window Farm. And, uh, there is like a large community with hundreds of thousands of people that are saying, how can I actually be more sustainable and cut my CO2 emission by half? 
and people started actually growing salads in their apartment using um, hydroponic technology, which is the same technology that they use in Amsterdam to grow marijuana. And they said, okay, cool, they can use it like for this stuff. Why don't we use it actually like to grow carrots, cabbage, like potatoes at home? And that's fantastic because uh, they started uh, creating the solution together with more than 80,000 people coming from 50 countries. And uh, these people were coming together, discussing the solution, discussing what was actually the best kind of technology that they could have actually implemented. And they developed different window farms depending on the kind of uh, salad that a person would love to grow in his apartment. And that's a big success because uh, they're doing better than any R&D department because there are just uh, uh, thousands of passionate people that are working together to design the, per the perfect uh, uh, system. Then there is like the part that I know the most, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about what they actually do, which is like how can you open the strategy of social innovation so that actually this can actually bring to scale impact or like help social enterprises. So this is actually the company that I created uh, some uh, two years ago together with my wife. So uh, we started actually bringing uh, s uh, change makers together and we started actually enabling them to open up their strategy so that uh, uh, we actually ask uh, these change makers every, everything. You are accustomed with can canvases. And we start asking them, like, tell us about uh, your stakeholders, tell us about like, how do you make money, tell us about like, everything that you do in order to bring the value and the impact uh, that you have in your mission. And then we connect uh, all this information with the right stakeholders so that we transform all these stakeholders that can influence uh, these social enterprises and help them validate like, all the key assumptions of the strategy. And uh, it's amazing because like, we got like, plenty of examples like, of uh, people that came with challenges. They managed actually to connect with uh, their stakeholders and they actually started getting solutions exactly as big corporations are doing today. But you know, this can happen actually like in social entrepreneurship and you know, the value is huge. So what we're actually doing is we're managing like, three key trends. The first one, of course, is the one of so social entrepreneurship in which uh, uh, we have like these projects that are not uh, doing things right, they are doing the right thing. So they are really like uh, aiming to achieve the triple bottom line. Then there is crowd innovation that as we said companies, big companies are using and uh, we are enabling actually um, also social innovators to do it. And then like the concept of the lean startup in which uh, you need co to continuously validate your assumptions in order to decrease the risk of failure. So like if you combine these three things together, then like you have uh, an online platform in which social enterprises involve their stakeholders to validate continuously their business assumptions. Um, we are like working right now with several collaborations and we are holding, for example, with Copenhagen Business School, the biggest uh, massive open online course with 21,000 people involved and people that, that are working all together to make sure that they can actually help each other open up businesses and like open up the kind of uh, feedback that they can receive. Um, the last part of the open source uh, influence like on social innovation is the one of the implementation. That's uh, a beautiful example that uh, about a small municipality based in uh, Sweden. It's called Vollerim. It's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but uh, that's a fantastic example uh, because uh, these are uh, 800 people living in this small village and they're all working together to actually save the local economy. As you know, like in all the rural areas, there is a problem of people that are actually running away because like moving to the big cities and there is like a desertification of uh, all these areas. And um, Everything actually started with uh, the mayor wanting to close their school because he said, guys, you have 800 people, you're too small. It doesn't make any financial sense to actually have a school here. And uh, all the citizens said, no, no way, you know, we cannot accept anything like that, we want the school. So we, they did a consortium, they started working together and uh, they involved 250 citizens to make a new school that worked as a social enterprise. And uh, after that, after that they saw actually that together they were able actually to bring the solution that the local government was not actually capable of bringing, they built a hotel with 300 people and uh, 300 co-owners. And uh, they started right now like bringing tourism in this small little village to make sure that they can actually survive and they're not gonna disappear in the next 20 years. And the last thing is uh, they built an incubator because they said, wow, you know, like all these people working together is actually bringing fantastic ideas. Like we're stronger if we actually can work together. Why don't we actually 
promote uh, even more projects that can help us thriving. And so they have uh, an incubator in an 800 people village, which I find fantastic because uh, in, you do not find this kind of realities very easily. So like, they have, of course, like have a culture for openness that is enabling them to achieve these results. But uh, I really hope that we're going to see more of these examples also outside of Sweden, hopefully in Italy one day. <laughs> so these are like uh, the five uh, um, aspects that I think like uh, open openness is actually impacting in social innovation and my suggestion to all of you is of course the one to open up because it's really important because the benefits of opening up are extremely high and I hope like you like this is gonna enable like social entrepreneurs to scale their impact uh, even faster thank you so much <laughs>